Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a lesson for concept designers called Designing Robotic Joints. So a long time ago, I heard a quote from a concept designer about designing robots, and it was, once you've designed which types of joints go where, the rest of the design process is just window dressing. And I think there is some truth to that. After deciding what the robot's purpose is, the next most important thing is deciding how it's going to move to achieve that purpose. And to do that requires joints. So many robot designs use what I've heard referred to as magic joints. They seem to always be able to bend in any direction you want, but to truly make a believable robot, you need to at least know how real robot joints work before you go off and make something more fanciful. So this lesson is a quick discussion of the major joints you'll find in actual robots, and then a few examples of more complex joints to spice up your designs. So here's an overview of the six different designs that we're going to be looking at. So the first one, which is a simple hinge, involves one degree of freedom, which means it only rotates in one way. Then this is a two degree of freedom joint. The three degrees of freedom, which is the most common of the joints for robot designs. A one degree of freedom elbow joint. Then a one degree of freedom hydraulic joint. And then a one degree of freedom slide joint. So we're gonna start with the one degree of freedom hinge. And right here, you can see an example of that. So if I grab this part here, it's a hinge on one single joint. And for a robot, there would be a little motor here, and the motor's only purpose is to uh, go this way and go that way. And so that's what creates this single degree of freedom on the joint. Now for robots, this isn't as useful, um, but it's more commonly seen on stuff like, for example, a door. Um, but that being said, there are certainly doors on robots or um, things that can be hinged to open up or close like uh, access panels. And so you might end up using some of these joints once in a while on a robot design. So here's an example of two degrees of freedom. So if you look here, this is very similar to the last one I did where you have a motor here, which allows it to hinge this way. But then as well as this motor, you have another motor, which you can see, which is this gray area right here, which allows it to spin this way and that way. And by combining these two motors together, this can go um, rotate along this axis, and then this one can rotate around this axis, and you can get a lot more variety to the types of situations and the types of angles and degrees that the joint can, uh, can make. And the most common example of this kind of joint is the ankle joint. So the human ankle joint is basically only got two degrees of freedom. It can go up and down, and it can go side to side. And so, now obviously a robot ankle joint could potentially do more, but if you want your robot to look pretty similar to a human in terms of its range of motion, then a uh, two degrees of freedom joint like this one might be what you're looking for. So here's the most common type of joint you're gonna see in robot designs, which has three degrees of freedom. So again, like before, you can rotate this way, and then you have a second motor here, which allows you to rotate this way. And then you have a third motor here, which allows you to rotate this way. And by using these three different motors together, you can get an even larger range of motion for your joint. So here's a couple of examples just to show you how common this joint is in most robot designs. So you can see here, this is the Terminator. And here you can see this is the joint that rotates this way, allowing the arm to go up and down um, to the front. Then this joint here has the motor which allows it to go up and down to T-pose. And then there is another joint, and that joint allows it to spin around the axis so that the arm can swivel. And you can see uh, um, some example, a closer example here. So again, this is the joint that allows it to go up and down. This is the joint that lets it go side to side, and then this is the joint that allows it to twist. And so basically, it's identical to this example here. Um, it's just more spiced up. And then just to show you this is the same thing in real robots, this is a robot from Boston Dynamics, and it basically has the same joint set. So it looks a little bit more interesting, and this is where the design comes in. You can make it, jazz it up and make it look more interesting, but fundamentally, it's exactly the same joints. So you have one here that rotates forward and backward. Then you have the second joint here, which allows the arm to go up and down. And then you have the third joint here, which allows it to swivel along the arm axis. 
So now that we've looked at the three main joints, let's look at a couple of more interesting ones. So you might remember with the hinge joint here, if you rotate this back and forth, eventually if you try to rotate it enough, you're actually going to intersect here and these two parts are going to hit each other. And so if you want something like, let's say, an elbow joint, this is no good because its range of motion is limited. Like you can basically only rotate it up to here before it bonks into things. And you can do some stuff um, to fix this by making this a little bit different in terms of maybe this like slides into that or whatnot. But there's another type of elbow joint which I find really interesting. And here's that joint here. So this one, instead of a single motor that allows it to go up and down, you actually have two and then a little spacer here. So the idea is, is just like the other one, you can go up and down with this, but then you can also go up and down with this. And so the advantage of this kind of joint is that you can actually get it to be far more fitting where you can do a much tighter um, rotation here, a much um, tighter squeeze and get like say the hand of the robot over here while it's still attached to the main part of the robot up here in the chest area. So here's another kind of joint that I really like, which is the hydraulic joint. So instead of having a motor here, which uh, twists the thing this way, what you have instead is you have this cylinder that pulls into here using hydraulics. And by pulling here, it pulls this part backwards, which then twists this. So you can see it in action here. And while there's all kinds of real technical reasons for doing this kind of joint as opposed to the standard motor joint, from a uh, design perspective for uh, concept design, especially if you're doing something more fanciful, it's just a, a more visually interesting and appealing way of pulling this joint because you have this thing that moves in and out and this thing is sort of uh, swiveling and then this is the point that's actually getting rotated. And so visually it looks a lot more interesting. And of course, the most common use of this sort of stuff is in construction equipment. And so what I've done before is if uh, I'm doing a robot that needs to be basically a construction robot, then I've added these kind of joints in there in order to give it that kind of feel. And then this last one I'm gonna show you is called a slide joint. So the way the slide joint works is a little bit similar to the hydraulic. This little device here will go up and down along this uh, cylinder. And as it goes up and down, it then pulls on this, and then this isn't a motor, this is just a, a joint, uh, a straight joint, and it'll rotate up and down. So you can see it sort of working here. And it's called a slide joint because this device here slides up and down this cylinder in order to make it work. So if you go online sometime, do a search for robotic joints, especially on YouTube and you're gonna see some even crazier ones than the last two. Even the standard three degrees of freedom joint can be made cool if you find interesting proportions or extra gizmos to add visual spice to what really is a very standard joint. So next time you have to design a robot, avoid the magic joint and use reference of real world joints to add an air of authenticity to your robots. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it inspires you to do an even deeper dive into robotic joints. And if you want more lessons like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section. Or if you want to be notified the next time I put a new video up on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much.